Okay, hello. Um, I did another iteration on overmind state charts in terms of parallel um, charts. Uh, as mentioned in previous video, it opened up some complexities. Um, uh, in my quest for type safety or a typed API, I need to do some thinking. But I come up with something now that I think works really well. Um, I did see a comment by David, the uh, author of XState, um, about typing not being the highest priority. And I I can understand where it comes from. Um, like you want to ensure that the state chart is true to the concept of state charts. But again, like they are like a declarative data structure that is statically analyzable which kind of types need, like for typing to work, that is exactly what you need. Um, but the problem is the API itself, like how you consume that data structure with an API in terms of um, figuring out what state is active and stuff. And in my experience, if you really put typing as a high priority, you often get a be better API as well. I don't know exactly why that happens, but my experience is just that it usually happens. <laughs> um, so uh, what I want to show you, I'm, I'm going to use a really contrived examples here, and I'm not going to create actual state charts. I will only focus on the structure of state charts. So what we have here is the Overman website. We're just going to latch onto that. And what we're going to do is rather uh, separate our config here. Uh, const config and that equals state chart conf. Um, yes. So this is the first change from the current version is that you pass an object as the second argument. And that is because when you define a state chart now, you define them with IDs in the structure itself. And uh, I really like this approach because it decouples the concept of an ID away from the chart itself. And the reason that's a good thing is that if you want to reuse a chart, if you think about the chart as a component and you want to reuse that chart, uh, you want them to have different IDs. So if you were going to define the ID inside the component, that would mean you would have to pass it like you have, would have to create a factory or you would have to spread and override the ID and stuff like that. But if the ID is part of the chart structure, uh, it just becomes a natural thing. You can just reuse it to chart wherever you want because they will, alway, they will always be behind a different ID. So let me just show you here. So let's uh, <clears throat> create a silly chart. Um, um, chart. <laughs> and it's a state chart. And we use the type of uh, configuration so we can access the actions and stuff. Mm, what's changed now is that you do not define the states of this state chart with an enum. You rather use an object. So I want a foo and a bar. Um, and I'm defining them as void. And the reason I'm doing that is because this type here defines the structure of the... Um, of the state chart. And that means that I'm not ha I don't have any nested charts here. So I don't define them. I use void to just say I don't have any nested charts there. Uh, and then I can define the chart itself. Um, and as we can see, it shows that foo bar is available uh, in states. It says foo bar is available um, like that. And then we'll add our chart. And as you can see, now the chart I use also gets the ID of chart. It's like chart, chart, like this. Um, and when we save this, um, did I quit my... Oh, there, oops, uh, there it is, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we can see that I have the chart here. Uh, and it has a few active. And the reason we don't see bar here is because I've added a feature where we don't show the um, inactive states. So if I click up here, we can see the whole chart. But by default, it will only show the active states of every chart, which cleans up quite a bit. Um, 
So I have to play around a bit more with this um, user experience in the dev tools. Um, also take feedback on this. Um, but I think this is this is really nice because typically you only care about the active state, but it's just to get like more overview of stuff. You can um, do this. Maybe it should rather be a checkbox where you expand all of them. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. Anyways, let's go back to the code. Um, so what would I do? Let's do parallel charts first. Now, since um, we are using an object here, I can actually, well, I can just say chart two and then use the same chart. Let's do this to make it more clear. And now we have two charts. We're using the same chart, but they um, operate individually and they have different IDs for me to identify them. So how do we figure out if um, what is active? What states are active in this state chart? Well, what I realized is that if we go here to state matches, uh, is that we should still have this matches uh, API where we pass in the structure. So now based on this uh, chart I've added to my uh, root configuration, I now get typing here. So, okay, I want to know if chart2 has the foo state active. Um, so that's the way I check that, but, um, and it's a little bit more verbose than the previous version where you could just say like foo. <laughs> but the problem with the previous version, uh, number one, it was not type. Number two, it did not support parallel and uh, well, it didn't support parallel charts. It did support kind of nested charts. But the point here is that here we can um, support everything. So we can we can even check like, okay, I want to make sure that chart two is in foo. And I also want to make sure that chart is in foo. Or maybe I want to make sure that chart two is not in foo, but it is in foo on chart, for example. So you can do very complex matches here. And you often want to think about these states as a switch statement, but I don't think that um, really works. Because uh, as soon as you have something nested or par parallel, you, you can't really switch on, because you don't have like one set of states anymore. You have many different states. So um, when you actually write your logic inside components, you would do something like this um, is uh, is uh, yeah now these are just random stuff is um, some state I'm not even going to go into that so you would actually write your matching logic and put it into a variable and then you would check if that variable was true and then return some component stuff uh, you wouldn't like switch on this because it, it doesn't make sense to switch on this um, yes. So, uh, what about nested? So what we can do here is let's, uh, create a nested chart. It's a state chart. It also uses type of conf and we're going to use MIP and MOOP, which are my secondary and go to variable names or like random names for things. Uh, and we're going to MIP and states MIP and whoop. so um, since I now want a nested chart I have to define that in my the chart that is going to nest something so I want my foo state to be able to uh, have a nested uh, chart uh, and we say type of nested chart because that's the chart I'm going to nest and then we use charts in the state there and then it says nested nested chart like that. And when we save this now, we can see that uh, foo has a nested chart and it's currently active on MIP, but you can expand here as well. Um, yes. And I can see the, the graphics here or the styling here isn't perfect. See if I can do something about that. Uh, and again, if I go here now, we can see that uh, the, f I guess we have to check this one. Now this foo, can either be a boolean or it can be another match. 
And that is because we have a nested charge. Unlike this foo, I can also be a match. Oh, sorry. Huh? Oh, so <laughs> I was confused. I'm, of course, using the same chart twice. So what I wanted to show you, we'll have to look at the other one here. Uh, let's do bar. <laughs> oh, these demos. So as you can see, the bar only has a boolean because it doesn't have a nested chart. But if we look at the foo, it can either be a boolean or it can be another match because it does have a nested chart. So let's look at that. And here we can see nested. And then we have our MIP and our MOOP. And we can say, I want that to be true, for example. But I could still just check if, okay, is chart foo uh, active? Or I can be more specific like this. Okay, so in summary, uh, there's a breaking change here. Um, the definition of uh, a state chart in terms of typing has been actually simplified because you don't need to define an enum. Um, the other breaking change is that you use the property charts instead of chart to define um, nested charts. And you use an object, no matter. If it's just a single charge, you still use an object because you want uh, this ID here. Okay, I guess that's it. I hope uh, this made sense. Sorry about the contrived examples, um, but I'm, I'm happy about this because uh, now we have something that is fully typed. And I, this is important because it just like you use overmind state in general in components, if you change that, state, you want the components to yell if they were affected by those changes. And it's the exact same thing about state charts. If you start matching up a state chart in your components, of course you want them to yell at you if you make changes to the state chart. And if you don't have a typed matching API, then they won't tell you if there's something wrong, um, which I think is super important. Yes. That's it for now. Um, I hope uh, it made sense. Um, if you want to test it, it's already been pushed to the next branch of Overmind. I haven't updated the updated the docs yet. I should probably do that right away. Um, and then I just need some testing. And I also want to iterate a little bit more on, as you can see, there's a little bit weird stuff here. Um, but yeah, happy about this and um, talk to you later.